Welcome back everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I changed the line on my Ozone Roads to Two glider and also how I adjusted the brake handles to go from low hang point to high hang point. If this is the kind of video that you like, stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. It's good to see you again. It's another beautifully sunny day here and what I'm going to do today is have a chat to you about how I changed uh, one of the glider lines uh, on my Ozone Roadster 2. Now there's several lines to change. I thought I'd just run through how I changed one of them and also how I changed the brake handle position, changed the pulley position on my Ozone Roadster also because I've got a high hang point harness and it's set by factory default for low hang point. Now, fair disclaimer, I am not a glider technician or any kind of a glider engineer or anything like that. I'm just a fat dude who's trying to fly one, who's learned how to do a few tricks from watching other people's YouTube videos and reading the manual. And I'm just gonna show you how, how I've done it. So the first thing is you probably recall that I had a little bit of a mishap in the last couple of weeks where the lines of my glider broke through the cage and my Nirvana Instinct and went into the prop. It damaged the prop, it also damaged the frame. You've seen we've already repaired the frame and we're awaiting a new prop. Uh, in actual fact, I'm also gonna get the old props repaired. Then I inspected the glider. If you have a look at the video here, you can see that there's a few different lines. Uh, there's damage to A-lines, which are particularly worrying. Uh, damage to the C-lines and some of the D-lines as well. So this particular line that I'm looking at changing is the uh, C1 line from my Ozone Glider. So this is, comes from the, the uh, C-risers to the, to the wing. And you'll see here that uh, this has become unsheathed. So the purple on this side uh, is covered in a, in a sheathing and there in the middle is the Kevlar core that's unsheathed. Now you'll also see it's not just a matter of it being unsheathed uh, but it's also pretty roughed, roughed up and frayed there. So the first thing that I did then was take the risers out of the glider bag and lay them on the table and have a look at them. The most ideal way of doing this, I guess, is to set your glider out on the floor in a no-win situation, preferably with not too much sunlight, because, you know, it's sunlight that degrades your glider more than anything else. Every hour in the sun is an hour less flying it. And do it that way so you can completely inspect the lines. I don't have the room here, and it's been a little bit breezy as well. I think throwing the glider out on the ground at the moment, it wouldn't stay there very, very long. You'll notice that on these uh, glider lines, you order the correct line for your, for your glider. They're all different depending on which line it is. It's important to identify the right line because they're different lengths. And you'll probably see that checking the line length is part of what I did as I was installing this on the glider. Each of these comes with a stitched end that's stitched into a loop. So both ends of the glider line uh, come like this stitched into a nice loop and this loops how we attach things um, one of the loops is kind of threaded through the loop of 
one of the strings on the glider, but the other end has to be attached into one of the mallions. So what I did here is I drew up the line from the mallion and I pulled the line through all the other lines until I had all of the line separate from the lines on the table. This is one of the things that's a little bit more dangerous about doing it like this is that there's a risk that you accidentally thread the line under or over one of the other lines. It's important not to do that because you can't just untangle that simply on the ground. You'd have to undo the mallion. So whenever you're undoing these mallions, be extraordinarily careful about what you put, where you put your lines and make sure you do a thorough line check before you decide to fly. So you can see here the first thing to do is undo the line on the mallion. The mallion was fairly straightforward, it's just a 7mm spanner just to undo it. It wasn't overly tight, it undid fairly easily. Now you can see that there's several other lines, this is the C line and there's several other lines all attached to this mallion. Luckily the line that I was changing in this instance was the, the one on the outside. Uh, I think it's probably important to keep the order in which you put these lines on the mallion to prevent lines crossing over each other because where lines cross that creates friction and creates wear. There's a little rubber, I don't know what you'd call it, a ring that is threaded on here and this holds the lines tight together and takes a little bit of the shock out of the lines. So you'd slide the line off the end of the mallion after undoing one end of this little loop of rubber ring. And that leaves the line uh, completely free and the other end of the line goes down to an attachment to other lines on the glider. It attaches, this one actually attaches to two other lines uh, that go up to the wing. So what I decided to do then was check the line length. I put the two sides of line together and worked my way down the line holding the two lines together to make sure that the size was identical at the end. I was, had to be a little bit careful because the line became unsheathed. As I was pulling my lines down together, it was actually moving the sheathing over the Kevlar. So just be a little bit mindful of that if you've got a line that becomes unsheathed because this sheathing will actually um, pull back like this and then as you're moving that line down it, it, it pulls forward again. So I did it a couple of times to make sure I was absolutely happy and although I'd taken care to order the right line, you, I did want to double check and make sure. It's easy to make mistakes, the wrong size line on the glider could cause uh, some issues. So I then worked my way down the line and the lines are joined together by, I don't know what the, the name of this kind of a knot is, but you've got two loops um, and you go through one another. So what I'm actually doing is removing the line uh, stage by stage, just memorizing and make sure I get it exactly right. So I pull the line through the loop of the distal end, the end nearest the wing. I pull the line through there and then slide the loop over the two lines and then I quickly get the new line, put the loop over the two lines again, and then thread the open end through. It's important to do it this way. Don't go fastening the other line to the mallion first, otherwise you can't actually uh, thread this through and do this knot. Once that's through and it's tight and you make sure there's no twist, it looks nice and neat and flat, um, then you can reattach things to the mallion. So again, I double checked along the line, make sure I hadn't crossed any other lines, nothing had changed, and connected the loop back onto the mallion. There was a little bit of Einsteinery going on here, a bit like a Mensa test, just trying to figure out how this rubber loop went again, but I, I kind of got it sorted after a little bit of playing around, and then fastened the mallion up again. So I, I tightened it up, nipped it up to reasonable tightness, tried not to over-tighten it, 
and they're all was good. So that was basically changing the line. Fairly simple, straightforward thing. I think the most difficult thing for me was figuring out which line it was that was damaged. I did have to shape the wing out to do that. So I had the wing out um, at an earlier stage and looked exactly which line it was. Looked on the line diagram provided by Ozone and ordered the line. I ordered these lines from the loft in the UK. I got a recommendation from Paranoob, thanks Paranoob, of where to go for these and um, and I find them uh, fairly quick and quite courteous and, and the line's not too expensive. I mean they do add up if you've got several to repair but I think they cost, I don't know, 10 or 15 pounds English each. But for, for something that uh, keeps you safe, it's not too bad. So the next job I wanted to do was change my brake positions. And the reason I wanted to change the brake position is I've realized that there's a different setting on the Ozone Roadster for paramotors with high hang points and paramotors with low hang points. Now I discovered this on reflection of the video of me damaging the equipment. And a few of you probably realize I like to reflect on what I've done and, and where I've gone wrong because reflective learning, I feel, is one of the most powerful ways of learning. And I wanted to reflect on what happened and I analyzed the video several times, had a lot of feedback from, from guys out there, a lot of contradicting feedback, uh, but still good feedback all the same. One of the things I did notice was or I did wonder was why did I break quite so deeply on, on that brake when I was trying to correct the wing? Well, it was partly, uh, probably mainly due to uh, it's been quite a few months since I've flown, so the muscle memories disappeared a little bit. But it's also partly due to the fact that the positioning of the pulley on this wing was set incorrectly for a high hang point. Now let me explain how that works. When you have a low hang point, the place where the carabiner fits in, fits in lower. Let's say about this position. And where your brakes are in relation to the carabiner uh, is roughly a similar position. So that's where you fly. And that would be your neutral position with your hands around about your ears. Now, if you've got a high hang point, the whole thing hangs higher. So that means now neutral position is up here above your head, which is a little bit less comfortable. So naturally, you're, especially with the muscle memory, your arms come down to here. And if I do that, I've already put in 16 centimeters, because I've measured it, 16 centimeters of extra break, just to be in the neutral position. And I think that part of what I did, I mean, a lot of part of the, big part of this is being a newbie but a lot of it was the muscle memory was pulling what I thought was from here to here to move the wing and it was pulling from here to here so I kind of noticed that on the reflection and thought whoa hang on a minute so I went back and read the manual on my glider again so when I read the manual I realized that for my high hang point glider I needed to reset the brake pulley position. So what we have now is we have a, a pulley at the top, this is set for low hang point, but about 16 centimeters down, there's another pulley that's not used. And I have to basically take the brake here, untie it, thread the line through here and retie the brake. But I have to retie the brake 16 centimeters longer to allow for that extra change in position. And now the neutral position's there and not there. So what I've done then is laid the glider out on the, I've laid the risers out on the table and I've made sure that the lines go straight from the pulley, straight to the brake without going anywhere else, without being wrapped around anything else. What I then did is undid the knot. You'll notice that wound round the handle is a lot of extra line length, and this is purposely for those who are wanting to change their brake position. So I unwound the line, and you can see that there's a knot here on the line. Now that knot, for any of you who like to sail, is 
a bowline. Uh, we use bowlines in sailing a lot, but one of the most commonly used knots. It's an important knot because it's a knot that holds stronger the more strain that's put on it, but tends not to tighten itself and end up in a knot that you can't undo. I measured the distance then between those two pulleys and the distance was 16 centimetres. Now that's important because I want exactly the same brake tension but on a pulley that's 16 centimetres down. So that means I have to lengthen the line by 16 centimetres. So after re-threading the line through the lower pulley, I then fastened the line back on to the brake handle. And again, we use a bowline. Now, it's probably easy if you go to a different video or just have a look at this diagram. But that's how this is tied. So that's a bowline on the brake handle. And then we just made sure by adjusting the knot that the knot was tight to the brake handle. There wasn't a huge amount of loop. And I measured exactly 16 centimeters from the start of the old knot to the start of the new knot. And made sure everything was tight and secure. And then all I had to do is repeat exactly the same procedure on the other side. And there we are, job done. So that's it. Now I've got a few more lines to change on this glider. I've changed one, that's the sea line. Some of these others aren't damaged that bad. But as I said, I want to change those just for security. So something a little bit different today then, Chubby Chasers. A little bit, well it's not an instructional video, but a little bit of educational video, let you know how I'd change the line and everything. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. If you're finding these videos entertaining or valuable, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the bell icon, that way you get notifications every time I produce a new video. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.